Greetings friends, I am Amuse and welcome to your comprehensive beginner's guide to Warframe. Here's a quick overview of what we'll be covering along with a timeline so that if you're unclear about one part, you can just skip ahead. I split it between two parts, an introduction to some basic knowledge of the game, and lastly, where you will find most of your answers to the questions, what do I do now and what can I do now? Alrighty, well with that said, let's get started. As a tenno, the beans that you will be playing as who serve as the protagonist and all of us, you will be then prompted for the frame you wish to start out with. Your choices are between Excalibur, Meg, and lastly Volt. They've all got a theme to them and are relatively balanced between offensive, defensive crowd control, and nuke abilities. Most frames are usually tied to a specific playstyle, but here there isn't really a wrong choice as these starters are all well diverse, so go ahead and just pick what seems most appealing to you. After that, you'll go run through the rest of the tutorial, picking your melee, secondary, and lastly your primary weapons, along with a fast-paced introduction to basic controls that concern the mechanics of the game. The tutorial simply does not stop there, as it will further introduce you to mission types under the guise of an objective in the storyline, and soon after you are free from your shackles, the rest of the universe is yours to explore. Let's start off by making sense of what's really put out in front of you. First, while you're in a mission, you have your shield, which is the blue bar, HP, which is the red bar. In the bottom right corner, you have your skill icons, you have your energy bar, which is the resource that is consumed to use skills, you have your ammo pool, the name of the weapon currently equipped, you can move around, you can sprint with shift, you can interact with uh, control, and you can slide by combining the two. You can switch weapons by pressing F, you can hold to bring out your melee only, and you can channel your attack which trains energy on hit while providing extra damage. You can do a slide attack, and you can also do an aerial attack, which can also be used for getting around. To type in chat, just press T. To bring up your map, press M, and also do note that when in doubt, do follow the markers. Uh, to bring up the party menu, just press C, and we cannot do this at the moment because we aren't really in a party, we're just playing solo, but that's how you do it. To bring up the progress menu, press P. To use it, the voice communication, you hold C, and then you will be able to speak to other people. To bring up the gearbox with all your items, or to use emotes, you hold Q and select whichever. But to mark waypoints, just press G, and to switch camera sides, you press H. These are health blobs energy blobs, mods and resources, and these drop from enemies and or lockers. In safe zones such as your set, which is your player ship or player hubs that are called relays, it's usually the same deal but more restricted. To get to the menu, hit escape. You'll have quite a bit of options, some of which will just redirect you around the ship if you don't feel like walking a meter or something, but most notably you'll be using this for the equipment option to check on what you have in stock. Also note that this is where you can change your ship colors through the deck relay set and customize hull. Communications you'll have three options. Friends, where you can go check who's online on your friends list, also who you had recently played with, and also where you go to add people as friends. Clan will give you an option to create a clan of your own or to learn about clans, which I will actually be touching up on later. And lastly, inbox, where you will receive all sorts of notifications and stuff. Of course, this is going off a PC. If you're shooting to play on the console, I advise you to take a look at how things are for you in the hockey section. Of course, you can find all of this yourself, but to save yourself the hassle, these are the interface tools you will be using most often and for your better interest to simply show you what you have here at your disposal right off the bat. Mastery level is essentially just a collective of your progress in the game, so to speak. Things that contribute to your overall mastery level would be completing mission notes on planets, and more than anything else, leveling warframes and weapons to level 30, which would be the max level for them in which they all carry experience towards your overall mastery level, running at 100 experience for weapons and 200 for frames. This is pretty important as you will most likely not want to backtrack. Always be leveling something and always max it before tossing it. Once your progress bar hits its maximum progress, you are then qualified for advancement, in which you will then take a mastery level test, which tests you on certain mechanics of the game. While it may be subject to change as it stands, there are weapons, frames, and quests that are actually locked behind certain mastery ranks up until a certain point, so it's actually encouraged that you do get to mastery rank 8 so that you have access to all of them to experience everything or at least have the option given that you wish to do so. A little side note in my personal opinion, mastery rank is just a measurement of how much content you've completed in the game. It hardly accounts for anything aside from that. The only other thing that people will draw from it on generalization is how well equipped your account is to take on missions because of how much progress it indicates you have made. However, that is simply a generalization, which even if you are well equipped, MR does not hold to how skillfully you play. As previously mentioned, Warframes and weapons have a max level of 30. Warframes in particular though have abilities which rank to stage 3 from unranked throughout this leveling process, running through 4 abilities. As you level these up, you will gain capacity points per level in which we will discuss further in the modding section. This is actually super important. At level 0, you have access to your first ability starting out unranked, second ability at level 3, third ability at level 5, and fourth ability at level 10. This is a chart that indicates the leveling progression, color-coded, for unranked, ranked 1, ranked 2, 
2 and rank 3. A lot of the experience you get is done through killing enemies, and if you complete the mission you are awarded, bonus experience equal to about double in which you have accumulated throughout the course of the mission. On your navigation, you'll see the planets available to you, and on closer inspection list will be a set of four types of resources you may acquire whilst on your endeavor. Collecting these resources are meant for the purpose of constructing new frames, weapons, consumables, and building a clan dojo. Now, the marketplace seems like it is over flooded with things to pay with the cash currency platinum. However, there are sections for the blueprints which will serve as a framework for constructing whatever it is that you are aiming for, bought with the in-game currency, credits, and made with in-game resources. Just a quick example for instance, if you go to the marketplace and over the weapons under the blueprint section, let's purchase a bolt door, and you'll see that you need 2 neurodes, 100 alloy plates, 900 salvage, and 600 polymer bundles. So you would then play missions on certain planets such as Earth for neurodes, Venus for alloy plates, and polymer bundles, and and lastly Mars for salvage to acquire them, in which it will cost an additional 25,000 credits to craft, indicated here. After a waiting period, it will be finished constructing and ready to use. Speaking of platinum in the marketplace, you will actually start off with a whopping 50 platinum. As tempting as it is to buy cosmetics, the general consensus of most players is to actually use that 50 plat to purchase one additional warframe slot and two sets of weapon slots. You do this by going to the menu, under equipment, and into your inventory, where you can expand those slots by paying with your platinum. I personally agree with the general consensus and would encourage you to do so. By doing this, you give yourself a ton more leeway to have more frames and weapons in your arsenal for a larger variety for uses, which overall will let you tackle on more things as you are better prepared for them. You have an arsenal that lets you equip your warframe, primary, secondary, melee, and a companion, but they are only at base a shell. Just as a parallel similar to a nice computer case with nothing inside, or because you can relate everything to cars like a frame with no engine. Literally. Mods are the lifeblood of just about everything. They will let you customize your playstyle to how you wish it to be. How they work is simple. Your frame or weapon have a set amount of capacity points, and you have your modification cards, referred to simply as mods, that have a set amount of drain to them and will take away some of those capacity points in exchange for the bonuses these mods provide. There are also polarities, which are symbols up in the corner of the mod, where if you do choose to match, will reduce the drain by half the cost of the mod, and otherwise, if they are mismatching, it will actually increase the drain. There are also aura cards for your warframe that provide a passive boost to your team and will also grant additional capacity points. However, However, these are only available through alerts which are temporary missions that give added bonuses on completion. Another notable mention are the stance mods for melee weapons, which not only give you added capacity points for your melee weapon, but will also unlock sweet combos to use while in combat. With these mods you can upgrade by infusing or feeding other mods into it which will increase the cost and drain, which will take the number toll off of the mod capacity on the frame or weapon you are installing it on. As for most mods, they will work off of percentage. This means that the higher the base stat is on your tool of choice, the higher they will scale with the mod. For instance, Excalibur has a well-rounded base stat around the clock sitting at 300 health and 300 shields, and compared to Volt whose shields are at 450 with 300 health, with an unranked redirection mod that increases shields by 40%, Excalibur will see 340 shield points, while Volt will see 510 shield points. That is a 20 point difference in increase, and with an unranked mod no less. Excalibur's shield will simply not get as hard as an increase as Volt does. This applies around the board to weapons in terms of damage, fire rate, reload critical, and so on and so forth. That said, there is also two other important factors that affect modding. There exists an item that will double the mod capacity, and also one to create polarity symbols, which will essentially if you match it to mod. As mentioned earlier, it will reduce the mod drain by half, otherwise if not matching will actually increase the drain. You can use an Orkin reactor or a catalyst, which are referred to as golden and blue potatoes, or your frame and weapon respectively. And you can use a forma to add or change existing polarities, and unlike the potatoes, these can only be used once your weapon is at max level while also resetting the level back to unranked once used. Why would you want to use a forma? The reason is simple. As they do cut down the mod capacity, they allow for more space for other mods, which will increase the power if you choose to optimize it as such. As for resources, you can buy these in the marketplace, however, you may get them through free means. The potatoes come up every once in a while in alerts, while the formal blueprints you can farm through the void. Which actually brings us to our next subject. While you have your own value, so do the opposing factions, which are generally split into three different sets. The Grenier, an armor-based faction, the Corpus, a shielded base faction, and the Infested, which consists mostly of flesh. And then there's the Void, which is somewhat of a cocktail comprised of everything. Under Warframe, you have a shield, health, and armor rating. The shield is a standalone value that depletes at a constant rate no matter how much you have and does not have anything that will mitigate against the damage done to it. Your health and armor rating are tied into each other at the value of this, and taking into account health and armor modifications, this. Damage types are a little more intricate as there are physical damage types and elemental damage types. 
What's more is that the elemental damage types can also be fused to create mixed elementals, which are more effective against different types of enemy defenses, that of which is also as intricate as the amount of elementals, and on top of that is different from Tenno defenses. Physical damage is split into impact, puncture, and slash. Impact being effective against shields, puncture being effective against armor, and slash being effective against flesh. You have your base elementals, cold, electricity, heat, and toxin, and you can mix and match to combine for a total of 6 combination elementals. The main elementals you will be running would be radiation for Veneer, magnetic for corpus, and corrosive for the infested slash void, and viral gas and blast to follow suit. Each damage type also has a chance to proc based on how much status proc percentage your weapon has, which will inflict a debuff pertaining to the damage type. Your star chart progression will look something like this. And to progress through it, you need to complete mission notes to get to bosses, which on their defeat will provide you with a segment to unlock the following plan. Do note that the mission types with the white outline are the ones you have not completed, but can play to unlock the fuzzy, non-selectable mission notes. Which brings me to mission types. There are a varied amount of mission types, so here's a quick explanation of each. Exterminate, a very straightforward search and destroy. Capture, take down and capture a specific target slash targets. Rescue, which is save a hostage. Assassination, which involves you fighting and killing a boss. Spy, retrieving data from vaults. Deception, while operatives are distracting, you go and hack into the data mainframe. Mobile defense, protect the objective until the data is retrieved. Hijack, defend cargo, depleting shields up until you extract. And then you have the more or less endless type missions, where the difficulty scales up based on how much time or ways you spend clearing up until a certain point where you have to extract. Excavation, powering and defending excavator diggers until they have extracted cryotic, which is a mineral resource and a reward. Interception, kinda like King of the Hill, you hold 4 points and fight off enemies until you reach 100%. Rewards are given every wave completed. Survival, collecting life supply resources from enemies, activating life support capsules, rewards every 5 minutes. Defense, Protect the cryopod from waves of enemies, rewards every 5 waves of enemies. When it comes to objectives that require defending, it is highly recommended that you stick around, such as in defense or mobile defense, as if their health depletes to zero, it will result in a failed mission. Likewise with excavation, you simply won't get the reward it will dig up. Also in survival missions, where you must live for as long as you can muster the strength to, hold on to those life support capsules and only activate at 30 to 40 percent. Think of it as simply picking a good time to harvest the fruit. Why do it while it's just budding? To put more clearly, it leaves a lot more leeway towards being able to work up life support capsules from enemy drops. From experience, you tend to get dry spells and sometimes you're able to stay at a healthy 80% for a long time without popping those life supports. They restore about 30% so you shouldn't be too jumpy on activating them. As a subsection to mission types, the following are simply different variants. Relays are safe zone hubs for many players to hang out and talk. It is also home to the Void Trader and contains rooms for many syndicate leaders. Based on the Orokin, an ancient civilization with advanced technology, these Void themed missions are scaled up variants of the many missions you will find throughout the Star Trek, ranging in difficulty from Tower 1 up to Tower 4. The Orokin Derelict, a subsection to the Void, is an infested Orokin themed set of missions. Do note that the Void is subject to change sometime soon, however, they remain the most profitable in terms of experience, credits, and are home to prime parts, which when assembled form a stronger variant of their non-prime counterparts. Alerts are a temporary mission that give bonus rewards on completion, providing a variety of things from additional credits, blueprints for weapons, cosmetic helmets, or the helmet chassis and system blueprints for the Warframe Vaughn. There are occasional alerts under these special types of missions, which adds on a variety of difficulties, one of which is more well known is the No Shield mode. Alerts to Side Nightmare mode is also unlocked through completing all the nodes on a planet, and on completion will provide a nightmare mod which has a dual effect. Invasions allow you to team up with enemy factions for a reward, namely Grenier vs Corpus. On these completions, the opposing faction will mark you for assassination, the Gustav 3 for the Grenier and Sanuka Hunter for the Corpus. There are also infested invasion types, however it is simply you versus them. These invasions provide a reward bonus on the completion of the mission node 5 times. This is a mission that will consist of 4 to 8 players and will require a special key to be built. We won't go into much detail here as it is relatively complex and requires a lot of team coordination, but overall it is an extremely difficult game mode and will require a more extensive playthrough of the game before you make an attempt at this. There are Solar Rails, an alliance slash clan based PvP system over dark sectors which are player run mission nodes in which an alliance can impose a credit and resource tax in exchange for playing the mission node with the added bonuses it provides. Duels are held in the clan dojo, a one on one friendly battle. Cephalon Capture, a PvP game mode where you capture the objective and score. Arcwing is another type of game mode in its infancy. It lets you fly all over space. You can gain access to Arcwing through the Arcwing quest. Currently, there are three game modes available, Exterminate, Sabotage, and Interception. You have two different choices of companions in terms of type. Sentinels, which are cute little floaty robot things that hover alongside of you and provide extra cover or fire with their tiny weapon, or Heroes, which are an almost dog-like species kind of companion. They are a good variety of each, and much like frames, they have different perks to them. 
from cloaking you to mercilessly ripping your foes apart with specialties. My only advice here is to go for the Sentinel as a companion. Due to the fact that the undertaking of a Kubro is a gigantic resource, it'll take quite a bit to take care of. Upon reaching Mastery Rank 3, you will finally be able to join Syndicates, which are separate factions you can ally yourself with. They've all got their own incentives towards their own goals, and choosing which ones you join depends on you. They provide rewards where you can trade in a certain amount of Syndicate rep points, which are earned through doing them favors in Syndicate missions or by completing missions while wearing a sigil, a cosmetic add-on that represents them. The trade-ins vary between many sigils, weapon augments, and ability augments that provide a unique twist on an ability. Or, at the very end of the road, progressing through the rankings, a Syndicate weapon unique to them, which has an innate Syndicate proc that effectively does a large AoE proc and restores a certain stat affiliated with the proc. When allying yourself with a faction, you are bound to get hated by an enemy Syndicate faction. At most, without backtracking yourself, you can ally yourself with three factions while being pitted against the other three. Plans. Simply put, a group of players who assemble under one name, kinda like a guild. It's easy to make, but much like Kubro's, the undertaking of managing one is a large train on resources. The reason it takes up so much resources are due to the construction of Clan Dojo, which would be kinda like a guild castle where you can hang out in. But also because of clan research, specifically, which are done in research labs where they produce blueprints for many different faction weapons and things of the sort. To join a clan, just message a recruiter anywhere with your in-game name asking for an invitation, and once invited you will receive an inbox giving you the option to accept or decline. You will receive a clan dojo key blueprint in your foundry where you will be able to then craft it for access to your clan dojo. One piece of advice here is when you're starting out, search for a clan through the recruitment tab in-game or on the Warframe forums. There are plenty of clans recruiting with full research, bigger clans or smaller clans, whichever is your preference for socialization means. Before getting into the whole what do I do now question, let's quickly tackle a rundown on the early bosses you will have to face before getting your first frame. Jackal on Venus, a four-legged machine crab that shoots rockets out of his back and stomps the yard like it's 2007. To take this beast down, you need to focus one of its legs down, in which it'll provide vulnerability to attack the body directly. Hide behind pillars or jump over the stomp waves. And as for the rockets, just jump, move around, and hope you don't get in the way of one. Sergeant Neff Anyo on Mars. Currently one of the easier bosses to beat. He's actually scheduled to be reworked extremely soon, but until then the only tactic is to kill him dead by any means. Alad V on Jupiter, a man with a tech fetish. The strategy here is to take him down, in which it will deplete the shields of his machine dog Zanuka. Take that thing out, and Alad V will be free for killing. There's a ton of annoyances with extras in the background shooting at you, but killing them will only result in more showing up. Your best bet is to just go straight for the kill. Lastly, Ruck on Saturn, a man with an armor fetish and a superiority complex. He has three phases, each of which will expose a bright glowing white spot on his shoulder, chest, and lastly back in that order. Mailing isn't really possible, but while exposed, you should shoot at the area to take him down. Try and make use of cover when he starts raging like a flaming baby. The first frame available to you will most likely be Rhino, whose blueprint parts are obtained on Venus, where you must complete the assassination on Jackal. His parts comprise of a helmet, chassis, and systems, and his blueprint can be picked up from the marketplace. Warframes and weapons alike draw on some difficult individual resources that are somewhat of a rare drop. In the case of constructing Rhino, your restricting resources will be Neuro Sensors, Morphix, and an Oregon Cell. Once his parts are finished constructing, you will then assemble them as a whole into the Rhino blueprint, and then will be prompted to wait 72 hours. Your first weapons, however, are somewhat restricted by your mastery rank. In this case, my honest advice to you is to grab every MK1 and buyable weapon with credits in your arsenal, level them to 30, and toss them before moving on to marketplace stuff. If you are really dead set on marketplace weapons, you can do what I did, which is to get whatever costs the least valuable resources and just play around, trying out different types, and sticking to whatever feels best. Starting out, I'd recommend you take a look at building the Boltor, Latron, or Pears. For secondaries, either of the throwing weapons, Bolto or Akbolto, Furious or a Furious. You know that to craft the dual versions of the secondaries, you will need to craft another duplicate of the single variant. For melee, there is actually an intense amount of great weapons, but to keep it simple, the dual heat swords, Galatine, or Orthos are all great picks. Warframes at base, you will normally look to run these mods at the very least. Nora mod, which can only be gained through alerts, redirection or vitality as survivability mods, and intensify to increase the power of your abilities, continuity to increase the duration of your abilities, streamline to increase efficiency and lessen the cost of your abilities, flow to increase your energy pool, and lastly stretch to increase the range of your abilities. For weapon loadouts, at the very least, most follow suit with a base damage mod, multi-shot for primary and secondary, followed by an elemental combination with whatever is left to optimize for whatever else. 
Primaries have base will want acceleration for base damage, heavy caliber, a corrupted mod for extra base damage at the cost of accuracy, split chamber for multi shot, and a dual elemental combination of your choice. Secondary would be Hornet Strike, a base damage, Barrel Diffusion for multi shot, Lethal Thorn, a nightmare mod that increases fire rate and multi shot, along with a dual elemental combination of your choice. Melee weapons normally you will be looking at getting Pressure Point for base damage, Fury for attack speed, and anything else you can fit on there really. It's all good. Do you know that you should optimize? Remember what I said about percentages in the modding? section earlier. Mod towards your strengths. The optimizing that comes afterwards should focus on that. It's hardly worth modding for crit or status if the weapon has less than 15% for example. It's doable but it really isn't as effective as it would be if it had 25%. Now this section is just personal opinion but based on straightforward easy to understand playstyle while being moderately challenging to obtain here are the frames and weapons that can cover a whole lot of content and are highly versatile while being super effective. Frost, a tanky defensive frame. He's mostly sought after for his third ability Snow Globe which is a bubble that protects from all incoming projectiles and will slow enemies that enter the bubble. An amazing frame for holding defensive positions. Trinity, a healer and restoration frame. Being able to provide a global heal, energy for the team, and with her link ability active, boosting her survivability, you just can't go wrong with her. Nova, the destroyer of worlds. One of my personal favorites. She's mostly used for her fourth ability, Molecular Prime, which creates a large expanding AoE that slows enemies and provides a two times damage multiplier, increased enemies affected by it. And on kill, they go boom. She also has a little nuke ball that depending on how much you feed it can result in some pretty crazy numbers. Lastly, Loki. There's a reason why many refer to Loki as a master race, and through playing it you can see why. While early on he doesn't seem like much from anything other than a squishy invisible pansy, the late game's fourth ability capable of disarming enemies from near and far is an absolutely invaluable asset to any team on almost any front. Not to mention while you're in stealth, it provides a times 4 stealth multiplier to your melee, so that's always welcome. And for some honorable mentions, Rhino for his well-rounded kit, with Suedo and vulnerability, to help with the survivability. Valkyr for outrageous armor value at a whopping 600 on top of being able to go invulnerable for a long period of time. And lastly, Nyx for a third and fourth ability, being able to cast land into chaos, turning enemies against each other, and drowning the world out in her own personal invulnerable bubble. As for weapons, keep in mind that any weapon format enough can be endgame efficient. It simply comes down to taste in terms of mechanics and preference, however it is clear that higher stats equate to better scaling. So, while we look at primaries with super high base damages and stats, the Bolter Prime for its insane DPS through raw damage, the Soma Prime for its insane crit potential, and the Paris Prime for its insane crit potential going into red crit territory, which is essentially a critical of a critical hit. All of these you'll have to hunt for in the void. And these clan tech weapons being extremely ammo efficient and damage efficient with high sustained DPS, the Quanta and the Phage. Syndicate variants of these weapons have proved themselves to be quite superior in many senses, but putting those aside, the Akbolto and Marilok really go home with the trophy here. As for melee, you'll be looking more towards the Dragon Icona, Dacra Prime, and Dual Igors. All do pretty great in the DPS crit section and can handle themselves fairly in just about every sense. In the end, just play whatever you like, because it's your game, make it your own. Anything goes as long as you stick to it. But as far as tools go that just get the job done, these are just a general guideline to go by through personal recommendation. When it comes to farming credits, doing void missions, alerts when you can, dark sectors as well, but beware they do have attacks on them and depending on how bad it is, I wouldn't really consider playing them. For resources, in general, any endless mission will yield a ton of resources and are usually best for farming. It's usually best to run survivals or excavation missions for this. For the most part, rare resources that normally drop by single units are best done by farming the boss nodes on the planets with these resources. Most notably, Alad V for Neural Sensors, Rock on Saturn for Oricon Cells, Tal Regor and Uranus for Gallium. Neurals are best done through Lephantis, which is the boss of the Orokin Derelict. Lephantis can also double up for Orokin Cells, up to a drop chance of 4 times. As for Argon Crystals, a requirement for good some things, you may only get them through the void and do have a decaying period, thus it is best to make use of them before they expire. This is best farm through Tower 1 Defense. The best place for mods again, just like resources, are endless missions. However, most of what will form your modding foundations can be done by running the excavation missions as a reward. Cambria on Earth, Eagate on Venus, or again spy missions. Now, perhaps you've heard of this mentioned around often, but these things are only obtainable through the void as rewards. Not only that, but they are also not a definitive reward as the drop tables are quite diluted at the moment. Since it is the void, it is currently subject to change as with the other things having to do with it, but up to this patch, this is about as good as it gets. Another thing to note is that the prime weapons and frames are statistically better than their non-prime variants. For Platinum, this will mostly depend on you. You have trades a day equal to your Master Rank, so the higher Master Rank you are, the more trades you are able to do. You can often sell Prime Parts or mods to other players for Platinum. Prime Parts are super great for Plat. 
As for mods, the ones that are really going to knit you a decent amount would be mods obtained through vault runs. Vault runs are done in the Rogue and Direlect Exterminate. There's a vault randomly generated on the map that will look something like this. It will be unlocked with one of the four dragon keys. So each of your teammates must bring a different individual key. Once you manually acquire the relic, complete the mission as normal and you will be rewarded with a corrupted mod. Depending on what it is, will determine the price you can sell it for. The downside of keys is that they have a dramatic downside to them, taking a big hit to your survivability stats, movement, or damage depending on which one you hold. Crafting these keys requires you to go through the marketplace under gear, and you'll be able to purchase a blueprint for them. They also require a void key to be sacrificed for its construction. And lastly, a couple tips from me to you. Abuse your mobility. You're not restricted to a simple run up, down, to the side, and crouch tactics. You have the ability to use air melee by pointing upwards and using your melee, coptering which is done by sprinting combined with slide melee, and can be done in the air while running, catapulting which is done by slide jumping, and so on and so forth. These are extremely useful for repositioning and getting around, and are vital to survivability. Aim for headshots. It's good practice, saves ammo, doubles your damage, and piles up bodies quicker. Some quick in-game terms. LF means looking for. Taxi is another way of referencing a player who has unlocked the node and can bring others who haven't unlocked the node into it. Thus, for example, you can ask other people to bring you to bosses by saying looking for Taxi to Neptune. You can also use this term to have someone invite you to an alert. Or if they are saying H in chat, it means they are hosting a specific mission in which you can just message them yourself and ask for an invite. And don't forget to say please. Really, really, really make use of your external Warframe information sources. The Warframe Wikipedia, Warframe Twitter alerts, Warframe Builder for theory crafting, and forums. Warframe is kind of slow to start with you having to travel at least one fourth of the way into the start chart to get the resources to craft your first frame just to be put behind an ungodly wait time for getting your first new set of things. But once you get the gears going, it becomes a lot more fun. You'll have things rolling in and out of the foundry before you know it. And moreover, it is a very goal-oriented game. So set out for what you want. It's practically your universe for the taking. Honestly, I think I've covered a good sum of everything. I do hope this video has answered most of your questions if you're just starting out, looking into Warframe, and of the sort. If you are a veteran watching this and think I've missed something, do post a comment as it may serve useful to some, and then maybe I can add an annotation somewhere where it's relevant. If you're a beginner and do have more questions, you can comment or message me personally and I'll be sure to get to you when I can. Now, if you wouldn't mind rating this video with a thumbs up or thumbs down depending on if you liked it or not, or subscribing, I'd really appreciate it. I am Amuse. This has been your comprehensive beginner's guide to Warframe Update 16 2015. Thanks for watching.